Hello everyone, George here, and we're back again with my implementation of Five Nights at Freddy's. We're taking off from the last video where I had exported all the different assets out and merged them into Unity. Now we're going to code up our main menu script so that we can actually interact with it using the Vive controllers. So the first thing we're going to do is create a very general script called main menu. And at first, this is going to control everything, and then I get a little more object-oriented in my design. You'll see it in a little bit how we switch off to other scripts. But we're going to do a ray cast into the scene. We're going to detect whether or not we collide with one of these different main menu items, which are each going to receive their own tag. Right now, I'm making some different functions, and I'm fleshing out how this is going to work. The first thing I do is decide that I'm going to have a select menu and a deselect menu function, and that's going to be on a base class called main menu. However, I'm going to revise that very quickly. Right now, I'm going through and I'm checking all the different emission values on each one, and I'm going to grab the current emission value, which is going to be about half of its maximum, and then I'm going to store a maximum emission value for when it's actually selected. Or, really, what I'm about to do is change everything to where it's hovered over. So if I detect that I've collided with one of these menu items, I decide now that I'm going to have a script on each one, and each one of those scripts is going to implement a select menu or deselect menu, or as I just changed, a hover menu and a dehover menu. The idea is that first you hover over a menu, which is going to illuminate that menu, indicating that you've, you know, are interacting with that particular one, and then there's going to be a callback to the button press, the trigger press on your controller. Here you can see I'm grabbing the Vive input get instance on button down tr uh, right trigger that I've programmed so that when that is clicked, we can go ahead and interact with it. And I go back in that base class main menu is now going to have an abstract method, which I need to implement in each one of the subsequent classes I'm going to create. There's going to be a class for the start menu, the exit menu, and the continue menu. Each one of these are going to implement the select menu itself differently. Obviously, one is going to do application quit, another one is going to load up a particular scene, and the other one's going to do something completely different. I don't know how continue is going to work yet. We have to figure that much out in the future. Now, I'm going to give it a shot inside of Vive, and it fails miserably and doesn't work. And this is because I'm not thinking about object-oriented programming at all when I'm doing this. Uh, the reason it failed was because I have uh, overridden the start and update methods in those subsequent scripts that, that inherit from main menu. That means that I'm not calling the base classes implementation. And the base class is what goes ahead and grabs the uh, material that I'm modifying the emissive value of. So make sure you override those things and call the base class whenever you do something like that. Now here I'm going back in, just checking some of the stuff out, seeing that nothing is still working. And once again, this all comes down to me not properly setting things up. And in this case, I'm going to go in there and just to make sure everything's 100% clear, I'm going to add a layer mask so that I'm only going to be interacting with the UI elements. So if there's any other colliders in the scene, it goes away. And that fixes everything. So now I'm able to interact with all the different objects. You can see that the illumination on each of them goes from about halfway to full illumination. Now that I've finished that, I realize that I need to start actually having gameplay inside of my game. Uh, and one of the things that we have spent a lot of time on in terms of gameplay is actually uh, repairing the animatronic that you're going to be putting together. So I go in and decide that I need to flesh out the scenery around where you're going to be repairing it, which is going to be inside of this chain link area. So I go through, and right now I'm modifying each of these different objects, trying to finalize them. One thing about Unity and their standard shaders is that uh, it's only going to render one side, the uh, front side of the polygon. It's not going to render the back side. So I go through there and I duplicate all of the different um, planes that are going to have chain link mesh on them so that there's a front side and a back side so I can use the standard shader without having to implement my own double-sided shader, which there's just no reason to just flip the poly. So there's, there's only four vertices on each one of those, so, so it's pretty cheap. Now I'm going through and just checking to see if my settings are all correct for the scene. And I'm going to go ahead and unwrap each of these. Not 100% sure as I start how I'm going to handle things. I decide to unwrap each of these faces right here. And then I'm going to unify them into one area and then have them all uh, have a common UV point of the lower left hand side eventually. Now I've got them all in the same place. So they're all going to share pretty much the same thing. But I go ahead and I make sure they all kind of are, are left bottom justified. Just because I wanted some common point for all of them. Now I'm going to go through and start unwrapping each of these. So there's a problem here. I'm not sure where it came from, but the geometry, the topology of each of these poles for the uh, mesh fencing is a little bit different. I screwed something up, so I'm not going to be able to transfer my attributes easily. So what you're going to notice is I'm going to go through a lot of these and have to manually do the UVs. I can't just click them and transfer. I tried to do that right there and it failed miserably. So now here, I'm just going to cut off the tops, the bottoms. I'm going to make, it's a cylinder, so I just need to make a cut down the side of it pretty much from top to bottom after I chop off the tops and the bottoms. 
and it unfolds out pretty well. Now there's a little bit of an issue where I had to go through each of these and delete some excess polygons that I had inside. And then Maya crashed on me. I don't know why, but it seems like whenever I'm doing UV work, not necessarily complicated UV work, but with multiple selections and so forth, Maya becomes typically unstable. Uh, and I'm always holding my breath whenever I'm doing UV work and I'm always constantly hitting control S to save because I don't want to lose all of my work. And luckily I didn't lose much of anything. Now I'm just laying them out, getting them in order. I think I'm gonna take everything at this point and make them all one material. Uh, if you look at the UVs and how it's laid out when I unwrap them, uh, when I automatically lay them out, they, don't, they take up almost no space. So I can get away with maybe all of them in one texture space. And that way they each have unique um, uh, textures on them when I go into Substance Painter and they're all gonna look different instead of being the same repeating element over and over again. Either way would work fine. Now I do notice a little bit of an error here, that's why it's taking me so long, where I had extruded out one of these elements, so I just go in and repair that really fast, doesn't take much of anything. Now I go ahead and um, I flatten these out, and you'll notice that when I'm flattening these elements out, I'm taking care to keep them unified, that is, I'm, they're sharing one face as they unwrap. There's really not a good reason for me to be doing this. Um, I'm not using Photoshop, I, I don't need them to all be in the same area but it's just kind of a habit from the old days of using Photoshop to texture everything as opposed to Substance Painter. I do like to keep things somewhat connected in some way. I go ahead and I try that topology thing again, doesn't work. So now I, I duplicate the one element, uh, delete the old one and place the other one over there so I don't have to do any work. Now this one on the side is a little bit more interesting. It's a little, it has some unique geometry. So I do take the time to unwrap that one specifically. However, the ones following this are each going to be the same pole. So I'm just going to transfer the attributes so that I don't have to do any work actually. So here I've just, I've unwra unwrapped the one and now I'm going to transfer those attributes in just a second. And that gets rid of about two more poles that I don't need to worry about. And then the last pole unfortunately does have a little bit more unique geometry. Now I could have um, separated these elements out and made it so that the center pole would be the same as every single other element and then transferred that geometry. However, the act of separating these elements after I've gone through and named them properly and um, layered them properly and put them in groups would just mean a lot of extra work. So it's just easier for me to go in there and manually mess with the UVs rather than actually uh, duplicating the objects and so forth. So here I've got them all set up and I'm gonna go ahead and lay it out and see what Maya does. And Maya makes a giant mess of the entire thing. So I go through and I try it a few more times. I rotate different elements manually instead, and that fixes some of the problems, but I don't like how it's laid out. It's split half of the col half of the cylinders one way and half the other way. And this is where a lot of times you, the human being, are gonna do better than the algorithm. So I go ahead and I flip half of them and then I realign them. And you notice it uses up much more of the texture space properly. I don't have a lot of empty stuff anywhere. So it worked out very well. Now I'm not sure why I'm separating the door that, that little element in the center that's different than the rest of them, that's the door that opens up and, and, and closes. Um, for some reason, I decided to, to leave that as a separate material. But now I go ahead and export just this part of it into Substance Painter, nothing else, just the chain link part of the fence. And I find a nice chain fence uh, material on Substance uh, Source that I'm gonna work with. And I play with that a little bit, but as I look at it, I realize that it just is floating there with nothing surrounding it. And this would not really work very well as a real chain link fence at all. So I'm gonna jump back into Maya and uh, spend a little bit of time uh, creating a border edge on that particular object so I have something that actually encases the chain link um, so that it doesn't just float there and just gets cut off. It has a something you know that makes it look, well, it's gonna look better, believe me, by the end of it, a lot better than what you just saw. So this just takes a little bit of time. Uh, I have to kind of mess with it. I have to delete things and re-put them in. Uh, I rename them and so forth and regroup them. And then I duplicate them and I use the same object over and over again. So in a way, it's actually a lot easier than um, what I was trying to do before because they're all now encased in this one solid object that I can reuse over and over again. Here, I'm just unwrapping it. Um, it takes me a few seconds because of that center, center uh, plane is messing me up a little bit, but for the most part, it goes very smoothly. I mean, it's just a bunch of, it's just a box. So there's really nothing complicated about it. Go ahead, rotate it, and then duplicate it and position it properly. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Now I'm going to have to worry about that one on the end because it's a different size, but for the most part, there's really nothing to worry about. Now I go ahead and take all of the tops and I merge them together and I bring them into the UV space. Once again, manually rotating them so that they are in a, in a, in a better configuration than what the auto layout is doing. And now I export out each one of those elements. I bring one of them in as well uh, for the door, have to make it a little bit smaller since the door section has those extra 
uh, side cylinders that make it a little bit smaller. Now that I've done all that work, I re-export it out and immediately I'm much happier with how it looks. That frame just makes sense when you're having these, uh, you know, these mesh elements, the uh, fence and so forth. I try a steel hardened. It's just too much, too intense, the normals. So I use a, a, a simpler version of that. And I go and I start messing with the, the rust because I imagine that maybe the bottoms have, have rusted over time, even though it's probably some sort of a galvanized steel, it wouldn't rust, but it doesn't matter. It, it's about ambiance. I, I could throw another rust on there with a darker one, more like a dirt, and that helps to you know muddy it up a little bit. So I like that. It might be still a little bit too shiny. I'm not sure yet. I need to see it in the environment, reflecting the environment before I'll be able to tell. In which case I can just go in there, throw another rust on top of that, make that maybe a white color and make that work. Now what I'm doing is I'm going through and I was just taking a minute to think about these other assets I wanna work with. And I wanna export the workbench out. Uh, but then when I go and I look at the workbench inside a Substance Painter, it turns out I have two different uh, objects that I've been working with. And one of them accidentally got deleted from the scene. So now I'm gonna take my time to re-import that object in. And unfortunately the object that I'm trying to re-import is not the right one. So I have to export that as an OBJ file from Substance Painter back into Maya, resize it, bring it into the scene, rename the material, and make it all work properly again. Now I've got that asset back in the scene. I'm gonna put that up against the side area. And the idea is I'm just trying to make places where we're gonna have the different animatronic parts. I've been thinking about the entire animatronic game. And I think I also wanna add things like a drill and maybe a couple different tools that you have to use at different areas to make the whole thing work out. I'm not 100% sure yet. Now I'm just playing around with things. I need to um, save that material off as a smart material. So I put it in its own folder, right click, save as smart material. And I bring it into the scene in just a minute. Uh, as you can see here with the table element and the other element, I think the normal is a little bit too extreme. I also don't like some of the directions that the grain is going in. So I duplicate the layer, rotate it 90 degrees, and then I go ahead and paint it in properly. I'm also gonna go through a lot and see if I can't find a uh, different uh, material, uh, a rust or something, that's different than the one I've been using constantly. And I bring that in, and once again, I, I make sure that that's only on really the edges of the wood, and I soften that a lot, um, and make it a lot less um, you know, notable, uh, just so that it, it doesn't really overpower what I'm going for here. I just want it kind of in those central areas as if things have accumulated and things have rubbed off on the sides. And now I'm going back and I'm kind of pulling down all the different values, I'm desaturating it, I'm making it a little less brighter. I'm bringing down the luminosity and so forth. And of course, I need to save everything that I've been doing so I don't lose it. Now, I do try to use uh, the same uh, similar types of, of wood on this object. I play around with this one. and I just think it's a little too, too dramatic. Uh, I try to reduce the overall uh, grain as well as the cuts in it uh, to reduce it down. And I go in and mess with the saturation, luminosity, and the contrast. And then I throw on a, a wood rough on top of that. And then I kind of blend the two a little bit. I give it a little bit of opacity. So some of what's from below comes through as well. But then looking at it from a distance, it doesn't seem to pop. So I decide, well, one thing you'd probably have on a desk with a backing like that is some sort of like a, a cork board or something. So you could put different notes and so forth on top of that, which we'll add at some other time in the future. So I go through, I look for a cork board, download that and throw that up on the back just so it's different. It's a little too bright and uh, cheerful. So I, I desaturate that down and make it look um, the way it's supposed to. Now I'm gonna go ahead and export all my things out using my Unity 5 occlusion um, uh, exporter inside of Substance Painter. Now that I've got all those different assets, I go into Substance, excuse me, into Maya, and I'm gonna export them all out. I'm just gonna export one of the desks, one of the tables, and of course the chain link all together as one, uh, or excuse me, uh, as separate objects. I'm then going to go over to Unity, load the project up, create my own room. Um, I, I searched for a little bit to try it. I thought I had some sort of like a testing room that I was working on, but I couldn't find anything specific to this part of it, the repair room. So after searching for a while, I just decided to create my own scene. And then I'm going to uh, just place those objects there with the intent that as things sort of evolve, I'll start placing all the objects in one scene once the testing is kind of completed and done. Now is the long process of grabbing all of the individual textures and then assigning them to their proper slots within the material inside of Unity. This just takes a few moments now that everything's been sped up by a factor of 10. Um, I also need to fix some of the, um, the diffuse value on a few of them is wrong. I'll have to go back, I'm, I'm noticing that now. I'll have to make that appear white. But here you can see all the different ones. 
uh, and everything looks, you know, relatively fine. Uh, I'm happy with it. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with it, and I, I think I'm going to stop there. I'll see you all next time. So long. Bye. Hey everyone, George here, and if you enjoyed the content, consider giving me a like. And if you had any questions about the content or want to know anything else in particular, then go ahead and leave a comment below. I'm pretty good at responding to things lately. And if you really want to support the channel, consider becoming a patron. I'll see you all in the next video. So long. Goodbye.